Hey guys, it's Bub here, and today we're trying to install Windows 2000 on modern hardware. About a few months ago, I uploaded a video titled Installing Windows ME on Modern Hardware. However, in the end, I failed and could not get Windows ME to work on modern hardware. I believe that we can get Windows 2000 to work because Windows 2000 is a part of the NT series of Microsoft operating systems, while Windows ME was a part of the 9X series. In the end, we faced many errors trying to install Windows 2000, but do you think we can get this operating system to work on new hardware? Watch to the end to find out. The first thing I did was use a Windows 2000 ISO and Rufus to put the ISO on a USB, because then we can try to use the USB to boot into the Windows installer. But first, we have to change some BIOS settings to get Windows 2000 to correctly boot on our modern hardware. The first thing we have to do is change UEFI boot to CSM boot, as Windows 2000 is not a UEFI compatible operating system. Once we do that, we have to change the SATA controller mode to compatibility. We are now ready to boot from the USB, and NT Detect has failed. So I took the same ISO, burned it to a DVD, and booted off the DVD. Surprisingly, we were able to bypass this NT Detect error and go straight into the Windows 2000 setup. But, as always, there's a catch. We got stuck on setup is loading Windows 2000 for a very long time. I left it at this stage for two hours and we were still stuck here. So then I had an idea. In the last video, we made a USB with FreeDOS, and then transferred the Windows 98 setup files to it, and installed Windows 98 on the USB, and then attempted to upgrade from Windows 98 to Millennium Edition. What if we tried the same thing with 98 to Windows 2000? So using what we learned from last video, I used the setup slash nm slash is switch to successfully get into the Windows 98 setup with no issues. We then successfully installed Windows 98 to the USB, but once we upgraded to Windows 2000, we got stuck here. I took the USB and put it in another computer, and we got to the Windows 2000 startup screen, but then we blue screened. Not looking good so far. So with hesitation, we went back to the DVD and I googled some things. Turns out if you press F5 at this screen, you'll get an option to select which computer you have. To bypass this stuck at Windows 2000 setup, we select standard PC, and then, we bypassed the issue. We can now select our hard drive to install to. I of course selected the hard drive that I had installed on this computer specifically for this purpose, confirmed that this is the drive I want to format, and then started to format the device. I let Windows 2000 do its thing, and I let it install to the hard drive. It did not require me to touch anything on the keyboard. As you can see, we made it to the startup screen, and we are way farther now than we were in the Windows ME video. As always, installing Windows involves tons of patience, and this was a step where we needed extra patience. Windows 2000 is very slow right now. Our screen started to flicker during this part, and I thought we would be getting some kind of graphics drivers, but we didn't. We're still limited to 16 colors and 640 by 480 we can now witness our first boot of Windows 2000 on modern hardware. The ISO I used for Windows 2000 included all the updates up to 2011, so right now Windows 2000 is installing all of the updates to make sure that Windows 2000 is the most secure version it can be, even though we won't be connecting this device to the internet. But here we are, Windows 2000 is now running on modern hardware. We're now ready to see our first full boot from the post all the way up to logging into Windows 2000. This is an achievement because Windows Millennium Edition did not work, and I truly believe this is because the Windows NT kernel is newer and is still used in modern Windows operating systems today, versus Windows ME uses the 9X kernel, which is probably why we couldn't get it to work. However, Windows 98 did work booting off a USB. We are limited to 640 by 480 in 16 color mode because there are no graphics drivers for this device available for Windows 2000, and I could not find a generic graphics driver for Windows 2000. Device Manager does show that a lot of our devices for the computer are missing, however that is expected because it's not supposed to recognize brand new technology. I plugged an ethernet cord into the computer and tried to load a web page, however it did not work. So that begs the question. Why would you install Windows 2000 on modern hardware? There really is no reason. 
I can't believe I'm saying this, but in this case, a virtual machine would be better to run Windows 2000. Windows 2000 on modern hardware is way slower than you think it would be. And you're missing graphics drivers, internet drivers, and sound drivers. So, with that being said, if you want to have some fun, go ahead and install Windows 2000 on modern hardware. I'm not stopping you. If you were hoping to use this for retro games, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you can't. There is no way that you would be able to run games on this because of the lack of graphics and sound drivers. The performance of Windows 2000 on modern hardware is surprisingly limited because of the Windows 2000 limits. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here, and check out the Windows Millennium Edition on modern hardware if you're interested in this kind of stuff. If you're doing this on your own and you have any sorts of questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to help you out. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.